us off. All right. Hey, uh, well, Lorenzo, you haven't played a game since November 24th, 2018. How'd you feel out there Saturday? Before I get to that, I want to I want to I want to say something. Uh, tomorrow's October 29th, and 51 years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation in schools had to end. And I just want to say I think that's incredibly important, and I want us to remember that uh, these next couple of days because 51 years is not that long of a time, and I think it just shows how much progress we have to make as a nation if schools were desegregated 51 years ago. To answer your question, it felt good. I mean. I hadn't been keeping count of how long I played. I just knew it had been a while. But once I got out there, I was comfortable. And I was just doing my thing, really just trying to get back into the groove. You played 34 snaps. Is that about what you expected? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we had a really a count. They, they asked me you know, how I was feeling. I was like, I feel good. And me and LJ were just kind of rotating as, as, as they saw fit. So that was what we did. And I thought 34 was fine. I, I didn't feel uh terrible or anything like that how many snaps do you think you could play in a game I, as many as they i'm needed to i mean i don't think i have a, a cap on on how many plays i can play i think that they probably don't want me getting up 60s and 70s like i had before uh I, I, pr I could if i need to but i think that this team understands we have the depth and and the ability to where i don't have to do that what's your role on the on the line lorenzo Are you talking about on the field or are you talking about? On the field during the game, what's your role? Oh, uh, I mean, I'm a nose tackle. So, you know, me, me and LJ and, and the other nose tackles, we kind of do the dirty work and, and have to eat up blocks and do the stuff that, that other people might not be able to do. And, and I think we enjoy the, the, the process and we enjoy being able to, to, to play with solid fundamentals in order to have – the, the guys around us make all the plays. And I mean, occasionally we get to make plays too, and that's a good time. But I think for us, it's really important to be really the heart and soul of that front seven and be able to kind of control the, the tempo of the O-line. You feel like you're in good shape? Yeah, I, I think so. I haven't really had any conditioning issues and I've been running at this for a while. So, you know, once, once we get into that week of practice and, and we start moving, I'm pretty fresh come Saturday. Hey, last question. Tuesday, everybody's supposed to go out and vote. What do you have to say about that? you have any message there? Please go vote. It's really important. And uh, I know people feel some type of way about it, and, and some people are neither here nor there. But no matter what decision you make, I think it's really important for everybody to vote and, uh, you know, contribute to this republic we live in. Have you, have you voted? I voted absentee, so I'm from Houston. So. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thanks. Okay, the X-Bar, you guys got anything? Yeah, I had a few. Uh, so l last year against Illinois, uh, the run game was a bit of an issue. So what do you think is the biggest difference from last year to this year in the front seven and its ability to stop the run? I think um, I went back and looked at last year, and I think a lot of guys, uh, and, and I probably would have been the same way had I been there. We just weren't fundamentally sound in the front seven, and I think that's – our, our thought process going forward is is to run what's called and, and stay in our gaps and just be fundamentally sound in order to to uh, play good defense against the run and the pass. Mm -hmm. Just in general, what do you think the biggest thing you're expecting out of Illinois' offense is? Football. Yeah. Thank you, I'm good. Okay, uh, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex, did you have something? Oh yeah, just just a couple. Um, so you're going to be going up against a very strong and experienced offensive line next week. So um, how do you think you're preparing on taking them on, and who would you say is the biggest matchup you have next Saturday? As far as the biggest matchup, I, I don't really have a, a specific name that I would say of oh, this guy is is the guy. I think they work really well as a unit, and I think for us it's just important, like I said, to play solid fundamentals and and be able to stay in our gaps and, and play good technique because the defense relies on us doing our 111th correctly so we can shut down the run. Okay. Sorry. So uh, Coach Lovey Smith said in a press conference earlier this week that uh, you and Lovey have had a relationship in the past. So uh, can you talk a little bit more about that relationship and how it has affected you as a player overall? Oh, can you repeat that question? 
I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so in the past, uh, Coach Levy Smith um, talked about how you have had a relationship with him in the past. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that relationship and how you have been affected as a player overall by that relationship? Uh, I, 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 I don't know if it, it's family ties. I, I, to be honest, haven't had uh, many conversations of note with uh, Coach Smith. So, you know, after the game, I'll be sure to, to, to talk to him. Uh, maybe he knows my dad really well. I haven't really asked. But uh, as far as my personal relationship with him, I, I can't say that I have uh, had that many conversations with him. Okay. And finally, uh, George Koloff has called you a leader for this defense in a press conference earlier and uh, that you help players on and off the field. Um, so do you see yourself as a leader for these players? And how do you say your experience helps the line on this defense? I don't say I don't think I see myself as a leader. I think I more so just try to be uh, in getting older. I'm trying to bridge the gap between new coaches and, and players who have been here for a while with me. And I think it's important for me uh, to to help uh, facilitate those relationships as best I can. So I wouldn't say that I just see myself as an all out leader. I think it's really important for me to have a good relationship with my teammates. And, and that's something that I've really been focusing on, especially at the time I wasn't playing, just to get to know guys on a more personal level. And, and that understanding of people who they are personally translates on the football field. And I think that's really important. All right, that's all I have. OK, Mike. Hey, Lorenzo, I want to go back to the voting thing for one second. Were you part of a group, or did you help maybe um, Get get some of your other student athletes registered, or at least you know try to try to send that message how important it was to to register to vote and then exercise that vote come election day. I talked to some guys personally, but I will say the athletic department did an excellent job in uh, being around and and having they were here for a couple of days where they managed to get quite a few people to to be registered to vote. So I was I wouldn't say that I really had a hand in that. That was more the athletic department. My I think my um, goal was just to have personal conversations with people and help them understand why you should you should do your research and you should read and in, into uh, who to vote for and, and why you should vote. Period. Why is it important for young people like yourself to vote? I think it's important just because it's 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 one of the foundations of our country and. And that opportunity to, to choose, and I know some people feel differently about it, but that opportunity to choose who leads this country, I think, is is really important. And I know young people haven't always had the best turnout. And to be honest, it is really difficult to vote in this country. Like, it's extremely difficult. So a lot of young people don't really want to go through those hoops to have to do that. And, and I think it's all about teaching moving forward how important that is and how like as individuals we form a collective which you know elects our leader and, and that's just an important process in in our country all right football question uh you guys rotated a lot of defensive line linemen there on saturday how much did that allow you to stay fresh as you got into the, the late in the third quarter in the fourth quarter yeah it was great uh i don't i wouldn't say we, we've done that as much in the past but i think we're 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 on that track and I think that's what we are going to be doing moving forward. And I think me and Lawrence have a, have a really good understanding of each other and, and our energy levels and, and our ability to, to play as hard as we can for as fast as we can, as long as we can. So we kind of had a really good understanding of when each other would need a break. And, and I thought it was great. And I think he did too. And uh, we even talked to the game after the game about how, you know, into that late game situation, we both felt good and we both felt like we had energy because we were splitting the reps per se. Uh, what was your impressions of Demarcus Mitchell in his first game at Purdue? I thought Demarcus did a great job. You know, I was a little concerned as anybody because having your first start be against Iowa is never the easiest thing in the world. They're one of these teams that they've been doing what they do for 50 some odd years and they're great at it. So uh, it's one of those teams that that is, is tough to play. That was one of the first games I ever played here. And I can tell you, I didn't play nearly as well as he did. Uh, it was one to forget for me. But he, he did an excellent job, and, and, and I'm really proud of him for that because that's not an easy thing to do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dakota, do you have anything? Yeah, just a couple. Hey, man, um, can you talk uh, – obviously, you've talked a lot um, 
about the, the platform that you have as a, a student athlete at Purdue and specifically a Big Ten university. A lot of people look up to, to players and to people like you. How have you kind of tried to use that platform, I guess, um, for, I guess, in your case, social you know, awareness, social justice and things of that nature? You know, I try to use my platform responsibly and in, in try to just disseminate information. But for me, it's more of a personal level. I think being at a school like this in, in the Midwest, in the, I mean, most of the team, or I'd say some of the team isn't really from here. And I think we've all grown up different ways. And I think a lot of that is, is just to communicate with, with people who might not have had similar upbringings to you about what goes on in, in different neighborhoods and in different parts of the the country really and, and that that person to person conversation that comes with having teammates from all across the country I think is is huge and, and that's something that's invaluable and you can really you can really uh, play a significant role in, in people's worldview just because they might not have been to where you've been from you might not have been where they've been from and I think that dissemination of information is really important for everybody. Cool. Uh, next thing I had, obviously, this is a shortened season, but for you just getting back in, into game shape, you said you felt pretty good and you got an eight eight game plus one schedule. You know, for you, how do you just kind of continue to build off, I guess, getting your game legs back after having a whole year off? I wouldn't say it's game legs. I think for me, it's just more the more the more plays I'm able to get. And, and I think the further into the season we get, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better and better every game. You know, a lot of it for me was pacing myself. I didn't go out there thinking I was going to be, you know, a world beater the first game because, you know, I, I want to have patience and I want to continue to develop that confidence in myself. So for me, it's just like a, a take it every day at a time, take it one game at a time and, and keep playing fundamentally sound. And, and, and then, the, you know, the plays will come to you and, and the things you know how to do will show. Not necessarily a, a, a give my legs back, more of just – continue to build confidence. Cool. Thanks, man. Okay, John, I see you have your hand up. You have time for one quick question, then he's going to be out of time. Yeah, totally. Uh, Lorenzo, I just, can you talk a little bit about the decision to not have any athletic events on election day and just kind of why that is important, how, that, how important that is in order to allow student athletes to practice those civic duties you were talking about? Yeah, I think it's great. I don't I don't remember if it was a, a school thing or, or a conference thing or I don't really remember who was initially who made that rule. But I, I think it's a great process. And I, I, I hope that in that becoming a, a trend, whether that's every major election, whether that's even some some local elections. Right. I think it would be great to continue that trend and, and really uh, have people adults in, in, in programs and in, in, in the country really do a better job informing us young people because I think that student athletes we have the ability to kind of be locked into what we do and what we know and that's sports and, and and not be able to look out and really have a broad worldview and I hope that that changes with time and events like this. Right. Okay that's it for Lorenzo. He